Hey, how's it going, brothers and sisters? And welcome to another prophetic sermon with me as we start our next series, which is going to be titled Worship as Warfare. All right, so what we're going to do is see in the scriptures how when we tap into the spirit of worship, it's a means of warfare to help us win many of the battles that we face, many of the battles that we go through. Um, and so we're going to be in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. It's a long scripture, cool. Um, however, comma, it is important that I read this these scriptures in its entirety, all right, because it's going to give us some important insights as to how we ought to fight these spiritual battles in the days that we are living in. So let's have some story time, right? We're going to consider this as little story time as we read the word of God. And then after we're done, we're going to go ahead and just talk about this. I say we're going to talk about it as if you guys could give me feedback. But um, yeah, we're going to we're going to just highlight some of the key points in it that we can use in our lives. Um, beginning in verse one, and it says it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other besides the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side of Syria. And behold, they be in Hazanon Tamar, which is Engedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new courts and said, O Lord God of our fathers, are not thou God in heaven? And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thine hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? Are not thou our God, who did drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gave it to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever? And they dwelt therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If when evil cometh upon us as a sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. And now behold the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt. But they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then upon Ahazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye all Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeriel. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. You hear that? Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed its head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of Korahites stood up to praise the Lord of God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. When he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the, uh, praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army, and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. 
And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. But the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. <clears throat> And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in the abundance, in abundance, both riches with the dead bodies, and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves, more than they could carry away. And there were three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much. <clears throat> Sorry about that. <clears throat> okay, so as we read this amazing story about King Jehoshaphat, what we notice immediately is that there was this bad report, this bad report that was given to the king. And when the king heard this bad report, he was afraid. He immediately experienced a sense of fear. And so when he was in this state of fear, he had to come to the realization that the situation that he was in was far greater than what he himself can handle. This is out of his hands. This is nothing he can do. He was powerless in regards to the situation. So he did the next best thing. The most important thing in all truth is that the king of Israel, the king of Judah, he humbled himself and sought after the face of God for help. So let's pause there and reflect on what he did in this instance. You see, brothers and sisters, there's a lot of time, there's many instances in our lives when we come across situations that is just beyond us to handle, that is just too hard and too much for us to bear alone, too much for us to handle ourselves. And so at that moment, when we're feeling like that we're about to be overwhelmed, we're about to be drowned by what this, this thing, this bad report seeks to do against us. This is our opportunity to trust in the Lord. This is our opportunity to surrender this issue into the hands of God. Now, we heard this before. We heard people say this, put it into the hands of the Lord. But because of our lack of faith, we don't think that this is something that the Lord can handle the way that we desire for the situation to be handled. And so, therefore, we continue to try to do these things in our own strength only to fail. Or if we are to get some kind of victory, it's very small and it was not worth the trouble that we had to go through to try to figure this thing out ourselves. So this calls for us, brothers and sisters, to understand the lesson, to learn the lesson of King Jehoshaphat in his story, where he was not proud. He was not so proud that he think that he could not seek the face of God. He was humble. He humbled himself and surrendered the situation to the Lord. Not only did he do this himself, but he also made a call to all the people of Israel to come and seek the Lord themselves uh, themselves as well. So that as a community, they could beseech the Lord, they could petition the Lord to get a answer, a needed answer from heaven to help him in this situation. And so this this event, this bad report, the situation that the king was in, he invited the community to come out to support him. And so the question that we have to ask ourselves, brothers and sisters, is when we do have these moments in our life where we're experiencing a bad report or something that is too hard for us to handle, do we have within ourselves, do we have we developed a community of people that could pray for us, that could intercede for us, that could be there to help us in these hard times? Because right here, the Lord has given us the blueprints of what worship warfare is about. And so not only did King Jehoshaphat come before the Lord, he didn't come before the Lord in any way that he felt like it. Too often, brothers and sisters, we dishonor the respect that is due to our God, the respect that is due to our king, to our father. So when he approached the king, when Jehoshaphat approached the king of kings, the Lord himself, he came with an offering. And this offering that he made unto the Lord was a fast offering. A fast offering where he renounced food and he renounced water for that season. He renounced, he sacrificed something before God, honoring God in this way, knowing that there's something that, you know, there's a cost that comes with the help that the Lord can give to us in our situation. 
And so this cost usually is a surrender of our will, surrender of what we desire to do, where we're beseeching the Lord to see what that he can come through and help us in that situation. And this is what King Jehoshaphat had did excellent in this manner. And we can learn from this. And then as we continue on in the story, we see that in the midst of the community, in the midst of the congregation, the Lord sent forth his spirit and gave a word to one of the congregation members who had the answer. You see, when we choose to handle our situations by ourselves, brothers and sisters, and not invite others that we trust to help petition, to help seek after the Lord for an answer to this bad report, we may miss out on a person that the Lord has appointed to be the one to deliver that message. If the king decided that he would try to figure this situation out and it would just be him and the Lord, he may not have received the answer that was needed. Because the answer to that situation, the Lord has already appointed someone to be the one to carry that message. And so this is why we can't, we should not allow ourselves to be put in such a dark place that we feel like that we have to handle our situations alone. God has built up a community, people in our lives, whether it is a brother in Christ or a brother, a sister in Christ, an actual sister, your moms, your dads, your nephews, your, you know, there's so many different people in your core group that the Lord has created for you in your life. So you don't have to walk this life alone. As for me, I had to learn that lesson, you know, going through hard seasons because I used to think that I can handle many of my battles alone and that I didn't need anyone to help me because I only had God. And little did I learn that I was just delaying the the resolve. I was delaying the solution to come into my life because of the fact that I was rejecting the very hands of those who the Lord who the Lord has appointed to be the one to give me the help that I needed. So once I began to open myself up and to trust, because sometimes we don't trust people with our bad reports and our situations, because we know to open up our hearts means to make ourselves vulnerable to where someone can take advantage of it. And this is why we still have to use wisdom in all things. But at the end, we have to be willing to trust in whom the Lord was sent into our lives to be the one to help us in our difficult situations. And so because King Jehoshaphat decided to invite the entire community, to come together to fit, to petition the Lord for an answer to prayer to figure out how they can overcome this bad report. The person who was appointed for this, the Lord has sent. And in this report was a prophetic word of victory, the assurance of victory, if the people would just believe and trust God. And the best thing about it is that in that prophetic word that was given to King Jehoshaphat from one of the members in the congregation, the Lord told King Jehoshaphat that you will not have to fight this battle. I will be the one to fight this battle. And so you see so many situations, brothers and sisters, that we go through and which we believe that we have to handle it ourselves. We never was meant to carry and as a matter of fact, it was the Lord who is willing and who's always willing to fight our battles for us if we are just willing to humble ourselves and come before him and surrender these situations into his hand, as we've seen in the example of King Jehoshaphat. And then upon receiving this good report, there was still a requirement, an act of faith that he was required to do. You see, the people were within the walls of the city contemplating, worrying on what will happen next. The Lord gives the word that he's going to fight their battles. This battle is the Lord's. They have nothing to worry about. But the Lord command them that they would have to come out the walls of their safety that they trusted in and meet him at this appointed place to see the salvation of their God. And so this requires that they put aside their fear, they put aside their doubt and their worry to come out of their comfort zone and go to this place to see the salvation of the Lord. And so the king has such an important role to encourage the congregation to remind them of this prophetic word, to remind them that the Lord has said that victory was theirs. And he also had the responsibility right to ensure that god was being honored in the midst of it all and so this is why he appointed the singers who went before the army praising the lord and in a spirit of holiness praising and giving thanks unto god because the lord has spoken it and it was done and so in the midst of this worship that was going on as you have read in the scriptures brothers and sisters with me is that the lord sent the ambush 
against the people who would seek to come and take a spoil of the people of Israel. So those who sought to spoil Israel, they themselves were spoiled as the Lord sent forth an ambushment to where he turned their weapons that was meant for Israel against one another to the point where they were utterly destroyed. So you see, there was a recompense that was reaped upon their own heads because of what they thought that they was going to get away with and doing against the people of Israel. But because the people of Israel trusted in their God, because the people of Israel reminded God of his word, because you see the king, when he petitioned the Lord, the king knew the word of God and knew the promises of God and was able to speak it back to the Lord. And so that is also an important element to know in our worship as warfare, brothers and sisters, is that we have to know the word of God so that when we begin to worship and we begin to petition, make our petitions to God, that it is accurate and it is accordance with the will of God and what he speaks of in his word. And so in the midst of this worship, in this midst of praising God in advance, the Lord has dealt with the enemies. The Lord has fought the battle of the people. And not only did they see the salvation of their God, they also was given a reward. You see, those who thought that they can spoil the people of Israel, they themselves were spoiled as the people of Israel took three full days to gather the spoils of war because it was such a great multitude. It was such a great abundance for them to have. And so the lessons learned here, brothers and sisters, as we just recap everything, is that if you're going through a tough situation in your life, Understand that the Lord does not expect you to fight these battles alone. As a matter of fact, the Lord wants to fight these battles for you. But are you willing to humble yourself, to come before the Lord, to give an offering of humility, an offering of surrender, where you're going to give this situation to the hands of God? So this way he can fight your battle for you. And not only would he give, will he give you the victory, but those who seek to spoil you, they themselves would be spoiled as the Lord would give you an, a recompense, an entrance, an interest, a return on investment because of what you had to go through. And so I pray that this be an encouragement, brothers and sisters, and this be a call to action to, re, to really reflect on yourselves and ask the question, are there any battles in your life right now that the Lord desires to take out of your hand? Are there any battles that you can surrender onto him so he could fight it for you? So that the victory will be sure and that you can go in praising the Lord, right? And because of how good he is and the victory that he has given you and enjoy the spoils of war because you have trusted in him. Well, I pray you is blessed by the hearing this message, brothers and sisters, and I will catch you next time.